Okay, are you finally done? That took a long time. You're being a high maintenance kitty this morning, Pumpkin. Yes, you are, Pumpkin. She's one of these cats. I don't know why I say one of these cats. This isn't a normal thing. She doesn't eat unless you stand right next to her. She's always been like that. It took you a long time to eat your breakfast today. She just wanted to play, which is fine. It's always good to play with some pets, right? Hey, Turbo, how you doing? You ready to go outside? You go have some fun? Maybe do some swimmies? Oh, yeah, okay, all right. I know, the swimmies are fun. That sounds like so much fun. I know, Turbo. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. Is everybody dope? You're doing well. I'm great. Why did my, what did I, what am I doing in here? Look, the fish tank, there's fish, and a lot of string algae. Oh, yeah. Got a few packages here. Things that showed up last night. It was kind of late, so I haven't had a chance to open them up yet. They were, oh my gosh, they were so misheveled. They're in all different directions out there on the front porch. I don't know why. What you doing? Hi, kitten. What you doing, floof? Very cute. Okay, there you go. I know, the floor. It's being replaced eventually. Working on it. But did you want to, did you want it? Were you going to, okay. He's just standing there staring at me. I was like, what do you want to do? I know you want to come outside. How's everything looking? Are we okay out here? I'm thinking so. It got down to 40 last night. It was brief, you know, only for a few hours, but that's pretty cold. I don't, I don't really worry about the 40s with most of the plants out here, but it's always good to have a look around and see if anything's looking wilty and sad. Mainly the heliconias, coconuts. They don't appreciate the coconuts are fine as long as it's dry. The heliconias are the ones who are the biggest babies about getting cool. You can see their leaves get all cupped up and sad looking. But yeah, that's just that time of year. Have to get through it and get used to it. It's gonna keep getting worse. Over here, I don't, I don't need to, you know about the boxes. You, you already know what's happening. I'm sorry y'all, I'm still getting my brain together. I wanted to get this done first thing in the morning because you know, he's been sitting in their packages. You gotta get them out. They don't wanna be in these boxes for too terribly long. I don't even know why I'm, it literally, it says open from the bottom. So why, why am I even cutting these up here? That was thorough. They're strapped in here. Heavy duty zip ties <laughs> going through there. These boxes, I'm trying to remember, there's two from Dharma Darling on Etsy, but um, I've ordered from them before. Really liked what they sent. And uh, hopefully it'll be the same case with the rest of these. Are there, there an invoice or anything? I'm, just, I'm so distracted. I need to focus on the plants. Hey, look at the plant. Isn't it beautiful? Packaged well. Uh, for some reason, the pot is sliced open. Obviously, that's not my doing. I didn't run the boy down the side of that container like that. But that's okay. Just pop it into a new pot. Rapsis Excelsa. Nice looking lady finger palm. Um, actually do some investigating here i've been trying to get a hold of one of these the problem is whenever i find them at the local nurseries they always have scale i cannot find these without scale on them so i thought okay i'm just gonna go ahead and order them and maybe i would have better luck which i mean i'm realizing now is a pretty stupid gamble to take <laughs> right because you're ordering things sight unseen but I just like to hope that these companies wouldn't send you something with scale. I see some old scale blemishes on the leaves and some pretty dirty undersides, but that's not, that doesn't mean that they have scale. That just means that there may have been pests at some point. So I love the Rapis, the Lady Palms. They're fantastic. They can be pest magnets though. I'm not going to go into depth talking about any of these right now they'll all have their own videos at some point in the next few weeks or months i'm not sure but that's the whole story there is why i got this and for some reason locally these things are like between 150 and 300 dollars why why i do not understand you used to be able to pick these up at lowe's and home depot for like 15 20 bucks about this size there's one at a nursery that i go to fairly often that was larger than this but not by much it's maybe this tall it was $2.89. No, it's just insane. It's way too much. That's a really common palm. They're not that slow to propagate either, so there's no reason they should cost that much. Let's see here. Can I get that? Snip that out? Okay. Yeah, the thing I don't understand about getting plants in the mail that have a big slit in the side of the container, like this one, where'd everything go? That was weird. Why did that happen? It's weird because you have a thing of tape in your hand when you're just tape it up 
<laughs> right? I don't understand. Well, since that's not the first time something like that's happened, but I just figure you have tape. Putting a plant in a box, right? They have tape, so you just maybe tape up the crack in the pot. You don't have to, but it seems like the nice thing to do, right? There we go. A piece of tape was being stubborn down there. We have another fan palm in here. Oh, it's taped up very well. Have a look at that one. Yep, oh, that's cute. It's a nice looking plant. Look at those leaves. Nice big leaves. <laughs> Plenty of tape. Spared no expense on tape. <laughs> this is well packaged. Make sure the dirt doesn't spill out. This is a Thrinex radiata. Really nice fan palm. They have a slender trunk on them, pretty drought tolerant. They like things more on the warm side. You may know them as the thatch palm, Florida thatch palm, though they can be found throughout the Caribbean. It's pretty common in the Bahamas and uh, Southern Florida, the Keys and whatnot. They don't get too terribly big. They don't have any spikes, so they're nice and smooth, unlike the Livestonas. Yeah, it's a nice looking plant. Again, I will be talking about these in more depth at another time. This has been on my wish list so for quite a while. I've wanted one of these. Okay, last one. What's going on in here? Oh, that's cute. That's a cute little palm tree. Look at that little trunk. Nice and thick too. Got some girth on it. This is a King Pong Pong, <laughs> King Palm, Archontrophenix myelinensis which is a less common form of king palm that tends to have a more graceful arch to the fronds and somewhat of a swollen base. And again, I know I want to talk about them so much more, but I have to say that it doesn't make sense to do it all in the same video when I still got some work to do with these guys. Pretty much the only place I've seen this for sale other than uh, Jungle Music, and uh, they're great over at Jungle Music, you know, Gary and all them great place to get palm trees but not the easiest place to order from so i was glad to see that i could just get it off of etsy wasn't very cheap just crazy to me king palms why am i saying palms king palms are really common at least on the west coast that's pretty much the only place in the u.s they're common and you know islands and stuff like that i never see them come up from florida they're not common i don't know why they, they're great palms they grow so 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 fast and they're pretty cold hardy compared to a lot of other smooth trunked palms too so uh, you'd think they'd be more popular look how cute that is i mean look at it it's just freaking adorable it's a cute little baby king palm okay yeah that's it there's the palm trees i'm gonna get these moved around get the tape and everything off the tops of their pots water them in in an hour or two like for it to warm up a little bit more outside it's not 40 right now it's like probably 65 things are going to warm up throughout the day i'm just you know it's that time of year trying to get these things handled anything i want shipped to me that i would like to grow out through the winter i need to get them now because we're losing time here so that's why so many things have been showing up lately i'm so excited about the the thrinex right here they just they're so stinking cute <laughs> like they're still a, an impressive palm i'm sure if you live in florida you're like whatever right because you see them all over the place but trying to find things that can be containerized that will develop a trunk on them and not take up a ton of space isn't always that easy and that's why i've been wanting to try the thatch palms because i've been hearing good things about them especially since they have the drought tolerance that maybe it'll be something that is okay indoors so they do like things on the warmer side so i don't know something going to be grown out playing around with experimenting with i'm going to get these things cleaned up and then i don't know pick up and do something still got a few days left to vlog weather's really nice palm trees are leaving next week so should probably do something in preparation for that but uh, i don't really want to forget to talk about you know how they were packaged and if i liked it I, I think they were secured very well in the boxes but i do think that the packages could have used the label that said live plants or an arrow pointing up they're very heavy on the side the containers on so you would think that would keep them from being tossed around but not necessarily they were strapped in to prevent them from falling the opposite direction and getting smashed but if you label them that there's live plants in the package more care might be taken in their handling those boxes were pretty roughed up by the time they showed up at my doorstep so that's just something to consider but otherwise they're good the plants look good uh maybe over potted the excelsa maybe not that's about where i would expect it the king palm 
the one in here in the middle that my linen sees, uh, that could definitely be in a smaller pot or could be larger. I would prefer that the plant be larger, but otherwise they look good. Nice, healthy plants. It, are you serious? It is 51 degrees outside and you've been in the pool swimming. You're a monster. You're a maniac, Turbo. Monster seems kind of aggressive. I didn't mean, where'd you go? I didn't mean it. I'm sorry, Turbo. <laughs> good boy, Turbo. Such a good boy. You're going to find a toy? You've got a toy. You really want to swim? It's so cold. It's that time of year where it's dropping into the 40s at night and then popping up into the mid 80s during the day. Kind of like it. Go on, go swim. You're free. Go do it. Do your thing. I'm not going to stop you. Go swim. Would, do you not want to swim? What's going on? Make up your mind. People are sitting here waiting for you, Turbo. Give us a show. Go swim. Go swim. Go on. Good boy. There you go. I'm not going with you. No, not happening. I'm not getting in there. Go get your toy. <laughs> and is he going to ignore the toy and go play with the dolphins? Yep. Yep. That's what I figured. He needs to waterboard himself. Gotta love dogs. The water's warm. I think the water's like 82. He's fine in there. Just the air. The air feels so cold. Would not want to be in there right now. Oh, well, that didn't take long. You're already back? Well, I... That's okay. You're a retriever. You're just doing what you're supposed to do. Do you want me to throw it? <laughs> no, you just want me to pet you now that you're cold and wet? Get away, Turbo. Gross. Get your toy. I'll throw you the toy. I'm sure everybody's loving this nonstop Turbo content. Uh, yeah, anyway, so it's been a few days since what you first saw where I was unboxing the cute little palm trees over there. Been having some projects I'm working on in the house and working on the winter videos. If you know what I'm talking about, I, for some reason, decided that October would be the perfect time to pre-film all of my content for the winter time so that in the winter we just vlog and have fun and the weekday videos are taken care of. And I don't, I don't know if that was the best decision I've ever made, but I'm already in it, so I got to follow through with it. Get to see it out. If I'm filming, like trying to do eight videos a week for the next few weeks, and on top of the videos that are already coming out, and it's just got my brain scrambled right now because there's just there's so much going on, keeping all that stuff organized. Uh, but I think it'll be fun for the winter time to have the weekday videos coming out being ones that are from outside. It'll be refreshing. Everybody's trapped inside. I'll enjoy seeing the plants and everything. And heck, I'm going to be surprised by what's even coming out because this is coming out to a total of. 52 plus 14, 68 videos that I'm pre-filming. So I'm not even gonna remember what probably half of those are as I sit down to edit them. So that'll be interesting for me. Apparently we're just rambling at this point because I don't know what to do right now. We're at an awkward time of year. Right now, there just isn't anything going on out here in the garden. I don't need to weed, I don't need to prune. I shouldn't really be planting anything right now. There's a car alarm going off. Okay, sounds like they figured that out. That went on for about six minutes. That was a long time. So yeah, I don't know what to do for the vlog. I, normally I just figure something out, but there's really nothing to figure out. I have these berry white hydrangeas over here that are beautiful and I absolutely love them, but there's not a drop of rain in the forecast. We've had like an inch and a half of rain since July. We're in a severe drought. I don't want to plant them over there until there's some rain in the forecast. You know, in the fall, I usually plant until like early December. I'll plant until the ground freezes. So uh, I'm not in a rush to get them in the ground. I just, I worry if I put them in the ground now, they won't do that well because the irrigation doesn't hit where they're going all that well. Not yet. Next year, going to be <laughs> changing things up and uh, getting some new sprinkler heads put in, but that's not happening until next year. Thank you. I appreciate it. Good job bringing your toy back. So just, it doesn't seem like a smart idea to plant them just yet because the ground's so dry and the air's so dry and the irrigation doesn't hit down there and it's hard to get a hose over into the, they're going to be going down like past everything over there. Uh, so I don't, I don't know what to turbo. What do we do? There's no way I can come up with an hour's worth of content. Absolutely not. I'm not going to go out and go plant shopping just for the heck of it. That's a bad idea. Ah, we're going to figure something out. It's his fifth dip into the pool. He just came back. Good turbo. This is nice. This is going to wear you out. You're going to be nice and calm this afternoon. By the way, when I unboxed this one, I think I called it Thrinex radiata. Usually this is referred to as Thrinex or Thrinax radiata. Potato, potato. You know what I'm talking about, but I thought I should make that correction. Really cool palm trees. 
I'm actually, I'm pretty excited about all the palm trees I got. The Rapis, the Ladyfinger palm, I'm kind of like a meh. I was hoping it'd be bigger. They don't grow so quickly, so it would've been nice if that were larger, but it's okay. It looks better than the ones I've been able to find locally and the price was pretty good on it. I liked all the stuff I got from that Dharma Darwin seller on Etsy. The uh, Thrinax, if you don't know, excellent palm trees, really common down south. They're a native-ish, Florida native. And then in a bunch of the Caribbean islands, they're native. You can find them growing somewhat in in little, somewhat inland is what I was trying to say. And uh, more into some of the limestoney, rocky, sandy areas. In the Bahamas, they can take some drought, but they do much better if they don't have that drought. Tend to be pretty slow growing in nature, but in cultivation, not quite as slow. And uh, I've read a lot of people read about a lot of people who read from a lot of people on like palm talk and different message boards about how they're growing them in parts of arizona and they're doing really well for them so it might be a fun one for people to try out just that i'd throw that out there if it's one you're interested in they tend to hold all their leaves pretty tight in their crown they have a slender trunk and they don't get too terribly big like maximum maybe 20 25 feet rare occasion you might see one 30 feet they're normally more around like 15 feet somewhere in there and it takes them a pretty long time to get there when just grown in their habitat and left to their own devices and uh, the reason i got it was because they have a lot of versatility you know i've been trying to experiment with different types of palm trees and try out some new things and uh, when i read about a palm that has versatility those are ones that usually make decent house plants i don't know if that's going to be the case with this one because they do like it warm but if they're growing well for people in arizona which is very warm, but it also goes pretty cool at nighttime. You know, the dry air doesn't hold onto the heat, so it cools off an awful lot. It means they can take the swings, and that's a really good thing. So a lot of palm trees, that just throws them off, kills them, leads to rot and stunted growth and all kinds of issues. But there are a lot of people saying that they're growing well for them in the desert. So might make a decent house plant. I don't know. At the very least, we'll see how it does in the grow space. And I just, I love the idea of being able to have a trunked fan palm other than a windmill palm there's always the washingtonias which are great but they get huge you, you plant a washingtonian usually in like five six years it's just too dang big and they're too hard to move around and they're spiky too they'll get you these are nice and smooth they're just cute it's just a cute palm tree there'll probably be a dedicated video to all those palm trees for sure i'm pretty sure i already mentioned that at the beginning of the video but uh where i'll talk more in depth and show pictures and things of them I'm thinking maybe I can work on the drip. I don't have enough hoses, the problem, but I have enough to do something with. The idea here is I want to get what's left of this line right here tucked back behind everything and run all the way back here behind this wall. And I decided that I wanted to wait until the palm trees went back to the greenhouse to do that because it'd just be a lot easier to move around and get things done back there. But... I mean, it needs to be done. I'm talking about having an irrigation shortage down there, down there, <laughs> down there on that hill. So I could do that, but I don't think the hose is going to reach down to where I'm going to put those hydrangeas. I'll have to add some more hose to it. And I know the impatience look terrible. I'm done with them. We're done. I don't care about them anymore. It's officially that time of year where I'm tired and they're tired too. They didn't perform for me. Took good care of them and they just sucked. The variegated tropical orange that's what they're called vigorous tropical orange sun patients they just sucked not taking care of those anymore huge waste of time even the ones down here the ginger planters you can see the gingers look great you know gingers love water and look at the impatience that are in there they're all wilted and sad and i was like you gotta be kidding me if the gingers are happy and growing with the amount of water they're getting the impatience should be too too much work that's not how about all the impatience. It's specifically those vigorous tropical orange ones. The one that's over here under the Eureka Palm hasn't been as much of an issue, but it has been very demanding of water, more so than any of the other sun patients that are out here. That's not, that's not relevant. I need to see if I can really even pull this off right now, because I was planning on doing this with somebody else so I could like feed it backwards. I don't really know how to do this without getting way in there and getting dirty. I don't really feel like getting dirty right now. Oh, are you starting to butt out again? Good. I had moved this oleander over here into the sun, hoping to get a late season flush out. Do you have mealybugs on you too? Yep, a few mealybugs. It's that time of year. 
bugs are showing up on everything. Okay, let's see here. Do I have a coupler? If I have a coupler, then what I may end up, that was really aggressive. If I have a coupler, what I may end up doing is just cutting the line and then pulling it down this way and running everything up from here behind everything and attaching it over there. For some reason in my mind that just seems easier than trying to finagle all this hosing back this direction and pull it through. Because the drip tuning, that plasticky tubing, it bends and snaps very easily. It doesn't snap very easily, but it bends very easily. And once it bends, it's done. I have valves, that would work. I could use that as a coupler. It'd be the same difference. That might be what I have to do. I might just use a valve. Oh, you know, and using a valve, I think that that was part of my original plan anyways, wasn't it? Do y'all remember? I don't remember, clearly. Uh, because to expect that this one hose is gonna have enough pressure to water everything from down here all the way around and down that berm and over to the Alexander pump down there, it's pretty unrealistic, even with the booster pump that's running on everything. So by having the valve there, I could adjust for pressure. So if things down here aren't getting enough water, if I need more pressure, then I can just turn the valve. And then if everything over here needs water, obviously the valve will stay open, but it's probably gonna be at a lower pressure. I don't maybe this is a waste of time. I don't know. Only one way to find out. I'm gonna come down here, snap that in half. These pruners, it's time to get a new pair. I've sharpened the blades, I've cleaned the rust off of them, and they just keep rusting back up. They're all gummed up and nasty. I swear to make the cut. I'm probably gonna want that valve probably right around here. There's some slack in the line, which you can see right there. So, somewhere under here. <laughs> Go figure, I'm about ready to cut this thing back. It's premature. But it's just, it's gotten so messy and the pollinators aren't very active right now. So I don't think it would really be all that harmful to cut it out. And also, oh, this is something. So I've talked about how I'm planning on moving this down that wall. Because as much as I love it, it just, it takes over so much space. I mean, look at, it's, there's barely any room to stand here. And uh, I've already moved it. It used to be over here. I scooted it back a few feet and it's still just... Too big. If you don't know, this is a Lespedeza Thunbergii. I think the variety is called Volcano. It's a beautiful cascading plant. Gorgeous perennial. Covers itself in flowers around late summer into fall and the pollinators just frolic all over it. They love this plant, but uh, this just, it's not working for me. That's not safe. So what I said I was going to do was order one of the varieties that doesn't trail and then next year move this and put one of those other varieties in. And then uh, just uh, absent-mindedly, when I was placing an order for some other plants, some bananas from Plantalites, I went ahead and I ordered the replacement already. So I'm probably gonna have to dig this up and move it this fall, which isn't ideal. It would really be better to do that in the springtime. So I don't know, that's a really neither here nor there. It's just a problem for the future. That was an, oh, my ADD may have screwed me over kind of thing. It happens, not the end of the world whole point there is I'm looking forward to this thing not being in the way anymore. It's just too much. You might be wondering why I didn't just set the drip up from this other end to begin with. And the answer is that I forgot and didn't think about it. So here we are. It's okay. Can still work with this. Gonna be pretty annoying and a pain in the butt because you know this stuff just doesn't bend all that well, but I'm gonna make it happen. Although I don't think I'm going to be able to take y'all along with me. That's a very narrow spot to stand up there. And I have like cords and stuff going over the place for the microphone. But I, I don't know. We're going to try and see if we can do here. Oh, fine. Already tangled up on something. There we go. Making progress. Only have one little kink. And it wasn't that drastic. I don't think I'm going to have to cut it. That's the thing with this stuff. I told you it bends real easily. And when it kinks, you're done. You got to cut it out and put a couple on it usually. Uh, oh, the Hinoki Cypress looks really good from here. It's an angle you never get to see, or you <laughs> ever get to see this plant, period, because I always forget to show the side of the garden to everybody. Isn't it beautiful? It's big. This is a really old one. It's probably, I don't know, 8 to 10 feet tall. Maybe taller than that. That's really big for a Hinoki Cypress. Love the shape on these. How the, look at the, the branches. They're so intricate and detailed. The flat leaves and everything on them. I'm really wondering how far down this is going to actually stay. The apple trees look like garbage. 
Anyways, what was I saying? Uh, need to get this all sorted out. That's the whole point here. Gonna try and run it all the way through there. Okay, that tightened down. I think that's good. Valve's open. All right, I think, I think we pulled this off. Need to come down here and see how far the line even goes. Had to pull this out so I could get in there to, you know, to feed it through. Looks like there's some slack I can pull to the other side, hopefully. All right, where does that line end? Well, <laughs> not far enough. I need it to come down to here. So I need another probably 10 feet. Even if I pull on it, I don't think there's going to be enough. No, no, not even close, but oh well, at least it's done. That was the whole point, is to get something done. I need to order some more half inch tubing to fully finish that up though. Look what I found. And by found, I of course mean cut out of the garden. I scavenged it from a different spot. Is my microphone on? Can you guys tell? I can't tell. I can't see the sun's in my eyes. I'm pretty sure it's on. So this already has a drip head in it from where it was run over there. This is like a dead zone. It's a drip that I'm not using anymore. And I'm going to need a large sprayer, which is what this is. Anyways, I fear that's okay. There's probably some more holes and things inside of this, but that's all right. We'll plug them up, make it work. Hopefully this is enough. I almost just fell very hard. Yeah, from there to over there. Oh yeah, this should be good. Get this popped off. That's the end. That's how you end your line. You just bend it and put one of these guys on there. Chances are I will have to cut this because that's more than likely kinked up. Probably beyond repair, but oh, I might be able to stretch it out. Okay. Not exaggerating, that took 25 minutes. <laughs> the, something I've noticed that I've been dealing with this year is when I'm using the old half inch drip line, it's not compatible with the new half inch couplers I've been buying. So I have to take a torch or a flame to them to melt them down to get them to work. This coupler, it just did not want to attach to the other end. Hold still camera, what are you doing? Anyways, have a large circle spinner installed up here. Another one right here. I think I'm just going to start off with those and see if they even get enough pressure. Ideally, there'll be enough to get a circle right here, because you can see the not heptacodium. Chase tree, desert orchid. That's what that is. It's not a chase tree. I don't know why I keep calling it catalpa. It's been dry, even though, you know, the irrigation kind of hits over here. It doesn't hit very well. And uh, everything up on this hill is always bone dry. So hopefully this will solve that problem. Okay, moment of truth. I just turned them on. It's remote control, so you have to wait a minute. Okay. Hey, got some flow here. And apparently uh, something I need to fix down there. That one's working, right? You're working, aren't you? I hear noise, but nothing's coming out. Oh, 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 there's air. Got to work the bubbles out. There's air in the lines. Oh, my God. Okay. All right. Oh, drama, drama, drama. There are some old holes from where there was a drip line down there at the end. At the very end that extra couple inches all I had to cut off this is good so these are the large circle spinners do I have the pack here's the package right here these do I believe up to a 10 foot 10 to 15 oh sorry 10 to 12 foot diameter pattern depending on your water pressure and you can see this is I don't know how it's showing on camera that's a nice wide circle same for the one up there I am shocked absolutely shocked that there's enough pressure to carry this all the way down here from the other side of the yard this is a I think that this is 250 feet of line. So I had two 200s, and okay, we'll say like 220, probably 220. That's impressive. I did not think that there would be enough pressure for that. So ideally, I'll be able to get a couple more put in down that line. I'm not worried about that for the fall time, but in the summer, spring next year, that'll be good. This, this whole entire hill area has just been so dry the last few years. And this should help with that. They can only run for so long because these are the same drip that's hooked up to a bunch of pottery and some other things. So it's not likely to be enough to actually keep the ground wet and saturated. That's not the right words, but you know, when you deeply watered, there we go, deeply watered. I don't think they're going to be able to do that, but they're going to be enough to help for in between the storms and everything. I'm not going to say that this is going to be enough to go ahead and get those hydrangeas planted because it's just still so dry but I feel a little bit better about it now than I did. I just, I want to wait another week and see what the forecast says. I would like to get in the ground, but 
it's just too dry. Everything out here is bone dry. I don't want to do it. I don't want to risk losing them. Easier to keep them live in the pots right now. Oh, I think the pineapple lily and the red bud will probably appreciate this too. There's just a little bit coming over there. Spots that sprinklers don't usually hit. This is so good. I'm so happy about this. I'm really glad I got this done. It'd be more fun if I was getting the hydrangeas planted too, but like I said, it just seems like a bad idea. Need to be patient. No reason to rush it. Don't want to kill the new plants. What was that? What was this thing? Don't want to leave that behind. Need that. Like I said, I still have a few heads that I'd like to get put up there. So I want to make sure that there's well, I'm probably going to need two or three of them to run up in this area and that hill garden. And that's going to make a big difference with the water pressure. But if need be, I can tap into the irrigation system on this side of the yard. There's a spot down there where I think I could connect. And then I would just go down to where I had that valve and close it or cut it and clamp both those ends off and have them just run on two separate areas, two separate zones, which might end up being the right thing to do anyways, but uh, not something I want to do right now. <laughs> Wait until fall or spring when there aren't plants and things over that I'm going to have to dig around and figure out how to even get to the irrigation in there. I am so sticky. So much sap. I'm crawling around inside that spruce tree. Oh, hey, now that hose is off the ground. That's good. That's been bugging me. Glad to have that done. That's a squirrel. This whole time, like months, I've been trying to figure out what that weird noise is coming from the trees. It's a squirrel. Can you guys, you hear it? Do you hear the squirrel? I'm trying to, I got the microphone over here. Can you hear that? Why is it doing that? What you doing, squirrel? Oh, where are you going? Where are you going? All right. Fellow nature enthusiasts, y'all let me know, is this a territorial thing or is it a mating thing? I think it might be a territorial thing, but the way it was laid out reminded me a lot of when cats are in heat. It was laying on its stomach and it was flapping its tail around. So I don't, I don't know. You, by the way, you floopy little butthead, you better not chew up that new drip setup over there. Okay, glad I got all that done now. I need to get these containers set up. These are self-watering hanging pots. I'm only going to do one of them for right now. I have a, what are you called? A, um, you know, it's a type of creeper. Lismachia. I don't remember the type, but it is not happy. It's struggling. And I would like to carry this over into next year. So I think a self-watering pot would be the best option for it. Look how much die off this had during the drought. It looks like there's mealybugs in there too. Oh no, there's lots of mealybugs in there. I need to do some spraying in here. Cool. Good to know. So I'm gonna be cutting this back all the way and it's not gonna be anywhere near as exciting as I thought it was gonna be. Okay, grab some soil. Gave this a hefty cut back. Like I said, when we had that, well, not had the drought. During this drought, this Lismachia hasn't been doing great. And I think that that's largely just because it's hard to get the water into where I had it set over there. And that's why I want to move it into a self-watering pot. I got this three pack of containers off of Amazon. Reviews were decent. The only thing I can really say about them, because I haven't tried them yet, is that they feel like they will break very, very easily. It's a really hard plastic. Uh, here's what the three different containers look like. There's clear and there's this kind of smoky clear and green, which I thought it was supposed to be blue, but this is, it's pretty green in person. That's very green. I'm looking at it through the camera. It's not really showing because it's clear, but can you see when I put it? Does that make a difference? Do you see the green? You can't tell. It's green. It was supposed to be blue. That's fine. I'm only doing one of these right now anyways. I'm just going to stick with the clear one. The thing I like to do with the uh, self-watering pots to make sure that they don't get overwatered and to make it easier to water them is to get them set up and make a mark along the edge here and then pop a hole in the container. That way I have an overflow. I have a backup so that particularly in the grow space when I'm just kind of spraying water all over the place, I don't have to be so tedious as to make sure that I don't overfill the reservoir on here and that there's just, you know, cause the water should only be up to the bottom of the pot in these self-watering containers. Shouldn't be any deeper than that. So while this is a great design, it doesn't exactly have a very big reservoir. I think that that should be fine for this though. This Lismachia is going to be happy, I think, getting into some fresh soil. 
because of the hardness on this plastic, that's why I have the heat tool out here. That's not, this is because that's, it's just a different box I used to put the heat tool in. And apparently I was really making sure that I was not going to forget what was in this package. This heat tool from all different directions. These things are nifty. Use them outside because, you know, burning plastic, toxic. You don't want to inhale it, but you just plug it in, you like it hot and just poke a hole. All right, so let's see here. Oh, wait, you know what? <laughs> I was about to do this and I was like, oh, it should be warm by now. No, I, d I forgot to turn it on. Oops, I forgot, it has a switch. A lot of things don't have switches, but there's a switch right here. My bad, okay, we'll be back. Never mind, the false alarm. Okay, there we go. Let's give this a try. Do it very slowly. Want to make sure that that's lined up just a smidge above the bottom of the pot. And that's it. It just melts right in there. Probably would have been nice if you actually could have seen what I was doing. See, if I had taken a drill to that, it just would have cracked this entire pot. I don't think that that would have worked out very well. And I would say height-wise, that's probably perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe just a little bit low, but that's okay. I only need the one hole. Sometimes I do two, just in case one gets clogged, but uh, I don't think that that's going to be an issue. Stay there. Don't move. Okay, I'm going to do the rest of these just because I already have the heat tool out. And then get this very saddleless macchia planted up. I feel like this is supposed to be pretty obvious, but I'm not seeing what I'm supposed to do here. There weren't any directions. I just... I don't know, how does this work? Because if I put the insert in on top, then the chain's going to sit underneath it and keep that lifted up. So that's not gonna work, right? So I figured what I'm supposed to do is attach these from the outside to loop them into here like that. That doesn't fit, obviously. I mean, it's supposed to catch. It shouldn't just slide right in there, but these aren't flexible either. So how do you get these to go inside these holes? And the other side's already pinched off at the hook, this end right here. See, so I can't just pull these off. I guess I could and just put them back on there and re-clamp that. That might be what I have to do. I feel like there's something very obvious I'm supposed to be doing here and I'm just not get, oh my gosh, you just turn it like this. I'm such an idiot. I can't believe I brought y'all along for that. That's embarrassing. I'm gonna leave it in. I'm not gonna edit it out, but that was stupid. This was something, it's one of those things where I guess you, you gotta play with it to figure it out. And here we are, I think I may have figured it out. I just assume that they're supposed to go on the outside of the container because like I said, once the pot is on the inside, then it's not gonna sit right if that chain is between the lip of the reservoir and this container right here, right? It would stick up. Yeah, does that make sense? That doesn't look all that good. Is it sturdy? Yeah, it's sturdy enough. I kind of prefer it to be something a little bit more elaborate than this, but oh well, I suppose it works. All-purpose potting mix. It's what I have here. It's a very sandy mix because it's what's left of the sandy mix I've been using for the um, some of the palms and things I've been repotting out here lately and the elastic of it. Oh, wait, no, 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 no. I'm scatterbrained. I have to put the cord in there. Totally forgot. That's the whole point of this. It's a self-watering pot. So there's a hole on each side in there. It's right there. You see the holes? Let's take the wicking cord. Super easy. Get that inside there. <laughs> Trying to hold this in frame. Get out of the way. I'll pull my hand down lower. And then that loops around to the other side. Even it out. And boom. There we go. That's the wick. Very simple. Now the soil. Get that in there. Should also do this outside of the reservoir. So you can get dirt in the reservoir and then just end up making a mess, but oh, I don't really care right now. I don't think that, that matters all that much. Pull the plant out and then backfill it. You get it. Same old, same old routine, you know? I need to take some of that soil out. There's way too much dirt in there. All right, got that into its new container, watered it in, blasted off the mealy bugs as best as I could. It's just going to need repeat spraying throughout the year. And then I'm going to top this off with some more water that has a little bit of root stimulator in it. Just like a drop. This isn't ideal because I didn't measure it out. You're not supposed to do, it's about a third of a cup per three gallons. And I didn't want to fill up the entire three gallon watering can 
just to <laughs> figure out how much I need for the two cups right here. So I just did like a drop. It's not like the plan for looking that great anyway. So if it hurts it, it's not the end of the world. Ideally, that's not going to be what happens though, right? Need to make sure that this has something to help get it going because it's seen better days. I think that that should do the trick, right? I'm here, here's hoping. That's all we can really do at this point. By we, I mean me. I don't know why I went plural with that. Uh, this seems good. Like I said, I feel like the chains are a little bit wonky and the way this sits in the container is kind of odd, but the whole idea here is so that during the winter time, when I have this in the grow space, I can have it hanging up from the shelves because, you know, this is a trailer, it's a crawler, but this just tangles up on everything. There we go. Yeah, you get the point, right? So it can hang there and dangle. It feels fairly secure. I think it's good. I do like that it's clear that they're all somewhat translucent. This one's pretty clear. The other's more translucent. So you can really see how much water is in there. I could probably add a little bit more, but I'd say this is good for now. That should be uh, all that this needs to get it up and going again. With Smackias, they're pretty tough. This one right here, the variety on it is called Fancifiller Sunburst. You can't tell right now. Maybe I can get it on the tag so you can get a better picture of it. They have a really pretty heart-shaped, glossy, stiff leaf on them. Not like on just the regular Wismack, like the Creeping Jenny. This is much more showy and ornamental. And it was expensive, too. This is like a $12 annual, so I never planted it up. I don't know if that seems stupid, but there was just something going on in my head where I was like, it's so fancy and expensive, I can't use it as an annual. So I've just been using it for cuttings throughout the summer. Uh, and then, well, now look at it. That didn't work out all that well for the plant, but this way I can have it for even longer. With Smackia, they're crazy easy, right? So it should be around for a long time and uh, eventually, hopefully, be a nice, big, healthy plant. And as far as those mealybugs go, you just have to stay on top of it. This is a small enough container that if they keep coming back, which I'm sure they will for a while, they'll probably continue to come back. Then I just have to take it to a sink during the wintertime and blast them off of their uh, neems and soaps and all those things are helpful, but really the best thing to do is to try and remove them when you see them. And then when you're done, spray them off. That's what I've been doing. That's been working a lot better. It takes a lot longer just get and physically remove them, but it's better than waiting. That's less some green on it. I'll go ahead and leave it. Uh, you may have noticed that I cut a lot off of this. It was, so it was a few feet longer. I could take those cuttings or, you know, bits of the cuttings and pop them in here to help fill this thing out more quickly. But these are typically pretty vigorous plants, right? I mean, you can tell from looking at it. Doesn't it look like just a wonderful, amazing, vigorous plant? Uh, they usually are, you know, fresh mix, moisture. If these things, they love moisture. Let's smack you. They like things to be wet. Well, moist. They can be wet as long as that water has circulation. So they do well in ponds. Uh, even the back of your aquarium might do well. But in this circumstance, I think that a self-watering container should be all that it needs. That should do the trick. Hopefully this will be looking pretty good here in just a few weeks. All right, that's been bugging me. Glad to have that taken care of, that and that drip system. So even though you know I spent about, what, eight to 10 minutes talking about how I wasn't sure what to do, I managed to get two things done. One of them, pretty big deal getting that drip handled and the other something small but needed to be done it's been in the back of my mind those pots just showed up in the mail a few days ago so I just hadn't gotten around to it yet I'm still I'm really surprised I did not think that the drip was going to work out because that line that I was putting in all the way down down around there down that hill that goes all the way back behind all of this back around that berm behind it over and to the Alexander Palm it's plumbed in all the way down there. I did not think there'd be enough water pressure to pull that off, but looks like there probably is. And that's gonna be a game changer next year. I have so many struggles getting plants to grow up on top of this hill. It, you can't see it. In a few weeks, the tropicals will be gone. You'll be able to see what's going on over there. It's just hard. It's a harsh area. It's a compacted clay that I've been slowly loosening up over the years, but it's only like maybe the top four to six inches where the compost and everything has started to really do its magic. It's still a lot of clay and hard pan and gravel because this whole wall is backfilled with a lot of gravel. There's a wall. <laughs> you can't see it. But you saw me messing around near the end of it over there. So uh, the plants just struggle up there. It's really hard to dig holes and to keep things hydrated and the garden hoses don't reach over there very well without smashing and trampling 
over other plants and it's looking like you know the two that i put down there i think will be good for that entire area i would probably be able to get by with just adding one two more i think that's all i would need and that entire space would be set up on drip and i could probably get some really cool stuff growing up there next year as far as the hydrangeas go i don't know i feel like i've beaten that subject dead right we've talked about it enough what i'm i'll go ahead and do is just let the drip the sprinklers run on their regular schedule uh, which is about 15 minutes a day and see what that chase tree not the chase tree the catalpa see what the catalpa ends up looking like you know what i'm talking i'm talking about this one right here the el nino desert orchid beautiful flowers on it but you saw how dry that was and that's a plant that can take pretty dry conditions unless it cry pretty dry conditions but it just isn't looking that great because you know we need some rain there's the, if you want more information on that shrub that i only showed for what 30 seconds in the video here we go i'm spending too much time focusing on something that was not important there's the name catalpa desert orchid beautiful plant going to be uh, even better when there's more hydrangeas over there i've been debating going back and maybe getting some more but i don't think that would be a great idea not right now because i need to sit back relax and enjoy things that's my priority right now because next week uh, uh, things are gonna be insane i gotta get all the palm trees ready to go because they're getting picked up next week i don't know when you tell them what week and i said the week of the 19th or i clicked on the 19th but that means they'll show up anytime that next week the week of the 19th and they don't usually let you know and they just kind of show up and it's go time it's very chaotic i do not look forward to it because i like to know when people are showing up to my house with a crane and a truck and i have to dismantle my backyard It'd be nice to have some prep time so chances are this weekend i'll go ahead and just start taking everything apart and get prepared for it start breaking the planters down get the palm trees ready to go which is gonna be sad but it's time I'm, I'm not over it i'm just i love the garden and everything and being outside but things are getting tired and it's the drought i'm just i'm so sick of watering i've never spent this much time watering plants in my life and that's even with drip i have almost everything out here on drip but it's just been different this year it's non-stop hours and hours a day of watering i don't want to do it anymore i'm over it but it will be sad to see the palm trees grow don't worry i'll film what i'm doing make sure that they get a nice send off everybody will get to see them leave and then can rearrange and set up for the second half of the year right in my mind i know this is backwards maybe other gardeners you can relate to this but when i say the second half of the year i'm referring to november through march to mid-april somewhere in there i consider that the off season right go season game time is when it's time to plant which is generally mid-march to mid-april until late october and then late october until march just you know chill time that's the second part of the year instead of it being what would be you know june through december for me it's november through march of the next year this is stupid it's time to go i hope everybody's doing well comment down below <laughs> say hi what's going on in your gardens you getting some fall planting done moving your house plants in i uh, hope everybody down south in florida hope y'all are okay i've been checking in on some of you and sounds like things are okay for most of you uh some power outages and some torn up garden which is great it's very fortunate i hope that's the case for everybody out there all right as always and most importantly everybody keep on growing bye bye